Hi, this is Rabbi Ashmaze of Tor Judaism International and Beth Ami Online Jewish Community. Here to make the oral law easy for you. Easy to understand. What is the oral law? Well, the Torah, the base for everything that we believe in Judaism, tells us that we have to listen, that we have to adhere to the rulings of the great court. God tells Moses to establish a court of 70 elders, 71 with himself. And God specifically says that by disobeying them, we would be disobeying him. This is the basis of what we call oral law, rabbinic law, halakha. Now, there are many misconceptions out there because it's taught that this law was given alongside the written law. Look, you can believe that. However, that's not what the Torah justifies. The Torah only sanctions consensus coming from these group of leaders, the Leviim, the Kohanim, and the Shoftim, the judges, the priests, and the Levites. That's it. That's all the Torah sanctions. So regardless, if you want to believe in and keep the oral law because you feel that it was given alongside the written law, that's fine. But you have to understand, the only reason we know that it exists is because it either came from or through the court. It came from or through the Sanhedrin, which is what I teach. This is what the Rambam teaches. The Rambam writes in Sefer Mitzvot that the basis of believing in what we call the oral law is Parshat Shoftim, Deuteronomy chapter 17, that teaches that we have an obligation to listen to the rulings of this court. Now, this court went by different names. The Zakanim, the elders, the Anshe Knesset the Gedola, the men of the Great Assembly, the Sanhedrin, the Beit Din Hagadol. This was the court. Now, there was something that you probably didn't know as well, and that's that your rabbi nowadays actually has no power. That's true. Your rabbi, including myself, I also have smicha. I have no power in Judaism to make any legal decision that's binding on all of Israel. And if your rabbi does not want to acknowledge this, find a new rabbi because he's leading you down the wrong path. Power was only given to men who had smicha, ordination, given from Moses onto the elders and on and on. And these individuals made up what was known as the great court. Now, truth be told, not everyone in the court had to have smicha, but there at least needed to be one person there with smicha for rulings to be made. Since the dismantlement of this court and the dismantlement of ordination of smicha, no one has power today to make any legal ruling that's binding on all of Israel. Not at all. So your rabbi, our rabbis, we don't have any power to add or take away any law, whether rabbinic or from the Torah. And this is something that I have to remind you guys over and over again, that the title rabbi nowadays was invented in the 16th century as a way to wield power in the Jewish community, as a way to give our teachers titles as well, just like bishops and imams in other religions. We have rabbis in our religion as well, but this is a new thing. Rabbi meant that you had smicha going back to Moses, and this, again, was abolished. So no rabbi today could create or take away a law. We're married to what's called the Mishnah, to the last ruling body that had smicha, and this is why we elevate the Talmud to such a high level. The Talmud is the Gemara and the Mishnah. The Gemara is a commentary to the Mishnah. So if something doesn't appear in the Mishnah, it is not what we call oral law. It is not halakha, and it's just opinion. Right, that goes for Kabbalah as well. Only because we have all these metaphysical ideas nowadays, these ideas cannot be considered oral law, mainly because oral law stems from a court, a legal system, and courts vote things into existence. That's how they function, and you can't vote metaphysical ideas into existence. If that was the case, we would vote that Mashiach would come tomorrow or that our enemies would drown in the sea. No. Voting has to do with what's called halakha lemase, what you do, not what you believe or how you feel. And I know that there's a lot of um, emoting and feeling and metaphysical ideas in, that exist in Judaism today that didn't exist in Judaism yesterday, which means that these ideas don't come from the Torah itself, which is the only authoritative source to establish anything in Judaism regarding what we believe. So again, the oral law cannot contain belief, just action. It tells you what to do, how to keep Shabbat, how to keep Yom Kippur. The 
Written law tells us not just what to do, it also tells us what to believe because this is the only source that's authoritative from a metaphysical perspective to tell us anything about the metaphysical because it came from God himself. So that's the basis of what we call oral law. So it's oral because it was transferred from court to court in an oral manner, not because it was given to Moses on Mount Sinai because the Torah doesn't say that. Okay, we have to keep the Torah's integrity intact here. If the Torah doesn't say it, there is no obligation to believe it. It's oral because it was transferred from court to court orally. These things were never written down. Why? Because they were fluid. One court with smicha could override a previous court and on and on. However, the reason it was written down is because they saw the writing on the wall. They knew that the court was going to be abolished, that smicha was going to disappear. So they wrote down the latest rulings. So we have something to keep in Galut, in the diaspora. And that's it. That's how the oral law functions. Friends, for more information about everything Jewish, please visit TorahJudaism.com. Thank you.